Hello, everybody. This is Donald Tardy with Obituary, and you are listening to Heavy Demons. So, dear Donald, how is the COVID situation in Florida doing? Uh, it's, it's much better than it was, mm -hmm. just like the rest of the world, I guess, with the uh, vaccinations. Um, Florida was not afraid to stay open. Mm -hmm. um, at the beginning of the pandemic, everything was closed, like most of the countries. Um, But Florida was one of just a couple states in America that um, eventually opened much quicker um, than the other states. Okay. And, of course, Florida caught a lot of complaining from other states because of that. But now looking back at our um, positive um, testing and stuff, we're, we're no worse off than all the states that stayed completely closed. Yeah. So it was a good thing that we uh, allowed our businesses and residents to still try to keep their careers and their jobs. So that was a good thing. And, and uh, back to your question, we're doing much better than we were uh, two or three months ago, just like the rest of the United States and probably just like Italy and the rest of Europe. What shall the fans expect from the forthcoming live stream studio sessions? Uh, we're excited about these live streams coming up you know we mm -hmm. we uh we don't want to be doing live streams we want to be on the road touring playing yeah. real live concerts but we are stuck home and have been home now for one year and one week so we we are staying busy with writing music um and in the meantime we are doing these live streams and uh these next ones we're really really excited about um next saturday Uh, Saturday, March 27th, we are going live from the obituary studio and the band members themselves picked the songs that are kind of our favorite ones to play, to perform live. Mm -hmm. And also, you know, a couple of the songs that we have not played in a long time. Um, we made it just a, a really fun set list. And then the weekend after that, the Saturday after, uh, which is March, which is April 3rd, we have locked ourselves in the studio and had to relearn the end complete. So <laughs> we are going to perform that entire album in full on April 3rd. So we are very excited about these next two live streams. Can you share with us some news about your next studio album? Did quarantine uh, help to work on it? It did help us work. Um, we, as always, we are a band that does not put pressure on ourselves we do not push the envelope if if your listeners understand that um saying mm -hmm. um so we really just took our time and we're writing songs as they came into our brain but did not try to uh we did not try too hard we wanted it to come naturally so we again are still writing the the music very excited about the new songs very obituary style Um, but just like a good red wine that's been opened, it's just getting tastier and tastier. Some of these riffs and some of these songs that we have for the new album, fans are really going to love. We, we stuck to our roots. We are obituary. We do not try to play a million miles an hour. We want it to be mid tempo and groovy and heavy. And that's really what we're trying to, uh, trying to deliver to our fans. Which are your uh, best and your worst memories, if there is any, about the late 80s, early 90s death metal scene in Florida? <laughs> I don't remember any bad memories. <laughs> Maybe because as a teenager, uh, all the bad stuff happened after I was uh, asleep or too, too drunk to remember. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, you know, the good memories were, you know, we were young death metal was just becoming uh, a thing and we were a part of that and we didn't even know we were a part of it we just were focused on becoming a band and becoming the best musicians we possibly could individually um looking back it's amazing to know that at the, all at the same time executioner which is now obituary was just beginning yeah. and chuck in Orlando with death was 
you know, laying the groundwork and putting out great music. And Deicide was just down the road from us. And Morbid Angel was just down the road from them. And to think that was all going on right here in Central Florida was pretty amazing. And uh, we're very proud that we were a part of that. And we are honored to still carry the flame and uh, and and hold the uh, and, and hold the uh, the Florida death metal torch and, and, and continue going as powerful and as hard as we can in this uh, upcoming future. Which are your main influences as drama? Well, you know, I I grew up in the se in the 70s and early 80s um, when I first began learning drums. So there was no death metal. There was no in my there was there was heavy metal, but I was I was young and did not own albums myself. So it was my oldest brother. Yeah. He had an album collection that I learned from, and that was all Southern rock and um, rock and roll. So as always, as you can imagine, any drummer, young child that was growing up that loved music, it was Led Zeppelin and John Bonham's drumming that really grabbed my attention and made me want to be a drummer and realize that I actually probably can be a drummer um, at a very young age. I was probably seven years old and uh, I already knew that I wanted to become a drummer hmm. and I was just listening to Led Zeppelin and John Bonham, his, his style, it was just so clean and solid and fluent and it really just inspired me. And um, I think you can hear that in my drumming nowadays, even at the age of 51 years old, I still feel that there's John Bonham still in my blood and in my veins. And then of course, um, you know, once Vinnie Apice uh, and Ronnie James Dio albums came into my life, it was really Vinnie Apice that um, I still listen to and learn from every time I listen to a song or an album that Vinnie is on. And, um, Those two guys were really my main influences. Yeah, and nowadays, I mean, in your free time, what kind of music do you like to listen to, like to relax? Um, you know, I, I think I'm a, I'm a creature of habit. I still like my old albums. Yeah. I still like my Ronnie James Dio albums. I mm -hmm. still like John Bonham and listening to his music. But, you know, also like the Alice in Chains albums that I grew up to in, in my 20s. I love Alice in Chains. Soundgarden, one of the best drummers in the world, one of the best bands in the world. Um, can't get enough of Soundgarden. And then, you know, just new new music, you know, it's just, I like it all. I, I you know, I got turned on to, uh, to Dust Bolt, the German band, thrash metal band, when they toured with us. And I absolutely love the last three albums of theirs. Um, the Power Trip albums. Uh, again, I was not familiar with Power Trip until they toured with us. And I fell in love with that band as well. And then, of course, you know, the old school, Celtic Frost, Slayer, everything that makes me realize where I came from. And that was with Tom Warrior and Celtic Frost and Hellhammer. Um, it's still in my blood and it's still in my roots. Which is Obituary's release you feel is the closest to your soul and why? Um, you know, I'm, I'm proud of all of them. It's hard to say. It's a good question, but it's very hard to answer because after 32 years of being a band <laughs> over three decades, um, you know, the first two albums, if you listen to them, you have to put in perspective what year we were writing that music and what year we entered the studio yeah. and how old we were. We were just <laughs> children when we went into the studio to record Slowly We Rot. So I'm very proud of that album. Same with Cause of Death. But, you know, a lot of musicians would agree with me and a lot of um, fans would uh, be happy to know that I'm most proud of the most recent music that we write. Okay. You know, a band is only as good as their last music written. Yeah. And I could not be more proud of that self-titled album now that Ken... And now that Terry are solid band members in this band for many years, we are, uh, we are a very well-tuned engine right now that is running just beautifully. And uh, 
we are really looking forward to the future and uh, getting this new album finished and eventually getting on the road and getting back to Italy and back to Europe and, uh, and touring again. This is what we live for. This is what fans want. And we are patiently waiting to get back on the road. Do you have any memories related to Italy? I know Italians are extremely passionate about their music. And I remember early 90s, some of the concerts were so packed and so hot and some of those venues. And the minute we start playing a song, it was so violent. <laughs> it was so <laughs> such a violent mosh pit. And again, the chanting... In, you know, with the with the rhythm, not all countries, not all fans know how to chant. Only a few different parts of the world that really do it. <laughs> the Italians do it. The Spaniards do it. The Brazilians do it. And uh, and 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 it's just an amazing feeling to to hear the chanting going on. And, and Italy was was probably the best at humming and chanting the rhythms with the band as we're playing songs on stage. So which uh, final uh, message and greeting would you shout out to the Italian fans? Well, you know, we have been a band a long time and we have had a long relationship with our Italian fans. We don't take them for granted. We take everything in. We absorb it. We uh, appreciate it 100%. And again, we just want to get on the road and get back on tour. And when we arrive to Italy, finally, we are going to have a party, Florida death metal style. And I know our Italian fans are waiting and they are as hungry as we are to hear some obituary live music.